Welcome to the Trucker Brown channel. Today we are going to look at this video together. We're going to react to it. This video is by More Perfect Union. Uh, it's I used to make 100K as a trucker. Now I make minimum wage. See, when I say stuff, it rolls off your back. So what I'm hoping is that if you see it coming from someone else's mouth, you'll understand really the state of the owner op situation the trucker situation. It's not what it used to be. So you hear old oh, guys saying that because it isn't. So we're going to look at this and this is posted two months ago. This is not something that is, Oh, it's years. No, this is two months ago. This is pretty much around the state of the situation. Now, if it's not worse already, I want to watch this first to have understanding. So we know how to move. That's what I'm more interested in. It's not doom and gloom. Every other industry watches the market and make decisions based on what's going on. Only us do we stay in one place because our personality is wrapped up in whatever we think we are. No, you're supposed to look at the market and have you look at it and feel some type of way. You're supposed to be worried about your, the way you make money. Everybody else does. So we're going to look at it. Let's just see what, what they got going on. Let's see what they have to say. We're going to look at a guy who owns a truck. We're going to look at a guy who's an industry professional. And we're just going to see, have you been seeing these things? Do you think it's true or what? Remember, this is made by More Perfect Union. In the driver's seat. This is my home. Why? I work 12 to 14 plus hours a day. But I don't earn enough. But he don't own or earn enough. This is Billy Randall. He's been a long haul trucker for over 30 years. We're working on a new series now about jobs in America that used to be stable and middle class and are all but gone. Used to be stable and middle class, but it's all but gone. But a lot of people get on here and they tell you, I'm balling. One of the most dramatic shifts from good job to bad job is in the trucking industry. Trucking used to be one of the most coveted blue collar jobs in America. The average trucker made $110,000 a year. That's enough to raise a family and have a home. Now many of them, like Billy, are barely making minimum wage. Are barely making minimum wage. I think Billy owns this truck. Let's watch. We're tired of being the back of the economy because our backs are broken. Look at his age. I keep telling you, there's no rainbow at the end of this. There's no point in lying. There's no rainbow at the end of this. We're going to unpack exactly what happened through the stories of two truckers that are struggling. One who's been a driver for decades and one who's trying to make a life for himself in the industry. This is the classroom for More Perfect Union. And today we're looking at why truckers can't make a living. We're looking at why truckers can't make a union by more perfect union. Can't make a living. But they'll tell you they're balling. You ain't nothing. You a company driver. I'm going to hop in and I'm balling. All hours work. All, all hours, hours pay. pay. I met Billy at a rally in D.C. with the truckers movement for justice. Billy is a little bit of a wild man. He's currently trying to lead strikes in the coal mines of West Virginia and the oil fields of Texas. Mm. And I think he might. The oil fields of Texas. I digress. Might pull it off. Billy has a vision that truckers would be organized again after 40 years of not having power. Let's go back a little bit. This Let's go back and understand your career. Let's go back and understand the history of your career. Everybody else does this. <sighs> this might be what you think of when you think of a trucker. An outlaw, a guy on the road with nothing to lose. But in reality, a lot of them lived pretty regular lives and went home to their families every night. Honestly. It was a hard, dirty job, but it was a good job. The truckers I met in Washington all had the same complaints. I'm worried yeah. now, honestly, it'll put me out of bed. I, I don't want my profit, my company, I don't want to lose my trucks. I don't want to lose my home. The pay is low, the cost of doing business is high. Let's get back to Billy. Like 350,000 other drivers in America, Billy is an owner operator. Billy's an owner operator. And our thought process all owner operators are better than company drivers and they're rich. 
I didn't say it. They're saying it. He said it got to be better. Meaning he owns his own truck. It also means he's responsible for the overhead, mm -hmm. repairs, insurance, maintenance. And if something goes wrong, it can cost him. Today, the truck broke down. A very minor repair, but nonetheless, it created a problem with the delivery. I've got, not to publicize this, $1,200 to my name. And I know y'all are going to say, oh, well, he's not a long haul trucker. I mean, your expenses are more, right? He didn't even have a sleeper on that truck. He's a box. That's different. How different is it? Really? Truckers like to say, if you bought it, a truck brought it. Truckers take great pride in that work, but that work can often be pretty tough for them. This is Steve Vaselli, a former truck driver who's been studying the industry for over a decade. Steve Vaselli, would love to talk to you. Let's break it down, man. Hit me. Steve says one of the main causes of wage decreases was deregulation. Before the 1930s, trucking was unregulated and stuck in boom and bust cycles. The economy would be strong and things would be moving in trucks. And then suddenly there would be a downturn and truckers were out of work. Trucking is so crucial to the economy that in 1935, the federal government started heavily regulating the industry by setting shipping prices and limits on how many trucks could be on the road. The federal government essentially set the rates for trucks. If you were gonna move steel from Youngstown to New York, you would go to something called the Interstate Commerce Commission, and you would say to them, hey, my costs to move this steel are a dollar a mile. Mm. And the Interstate Commerce Commission would say, well, okay, then you can charge a dollar six per mile to your customers, whether it's US steel, or a mom and pop. I don't know if I don't know if I don't ugh. I don't know if I wanted that regulated. <laughs> but I don't know. Let's let's see what they gotta say. Up the machine shop that needs to move it. Freight was moved from terminal to terminal, where local deliveries would combine smaller loads together and send them to the next terminal through long haul truckers. What that meant for drivers was a lot of them were home every night and they had regular schedules. It also meant that those terminals were easier to unionize. The whole industry was unionized and regulated. The whole industry was unionized. Now, do I want the whole industry to be unionized again? I'm not going to say I want the whole industry to be unionized because unions traditionally are factions that they do help the price of what's going on, but they also exclude sectors of the population from work. So they're like, they're, they can be politically bought off. So you would have to be, you know, it may be under the lines of religion, maybe under the lines of region, maybe under the lines of race, ethnicity, you know, they can discriminate on who they want to because they, when they have too much power, but should they all be completely gone? I don't think they all should be completely gone because, you know, most of them are gone now and look where we are. Under the National Master Freight Agreement, negotiated by the Teamsters, which was one of the most powerful unions in the United States. That all ended when Jimmy Carter signed the Motor Carrier Act of 1980 in an effort to lower prices for consumers. This was a bipartisan effort. You probably don't think of truckers as timid people, but that's because you haven't seen how some of them react when you say competition. Republicans, Democrats, and industry were all involved. And in a way, deregulation worked. Prices went down for consumers and rates went down for shippers. And it opened up competition so that the larger stores, think Walmart, Kmart, Costco, mm. could haggle for lower prices. Remember that under regulation, the government set shipping prices for all stores, big and small. So deregulation brought us the world of cheap shipping that we live in now. What that meant for truck drivers was a lot of really bad jobs. Thousands of what that meant for truck drivers was a lot of really bad jobs. So when you hear truck drivers be like, I'm in deregulation and you know what? The government's always in the way. Then they'll turn around and say, truck is dead. You got to pick one. Smaller trucking companies went out of business in the 1980s and something else changed that made the job harder. Freight started moving point to point from the shipper's location all the way to the customer. For drivers, that means that, you know, they're living out of the truck. Uh, they're essentially working 24 hours a day and they can't know exactly when they're gonna be home. And the thing is, truckers don't make overtime. That's right. Truckers are one of the few workers that are exempt from overtime in our labor laws. That are exempt. That's that. Why, why we gotta get picked out? But then we can't be mad. You're not mad at the waitress. 
You know, waitress, they get like two, three dollars an hour and they live on tips. I mean, but dang, bro. So a trucker can be working 100 hours a week and not make close to minimum wage. All of these changes have created a labor crisis. The turnover rate at most companies is now well over 100%. Mm -hmm. That's why every year the American Trucking Association claims there's a driver shortage. 80,000 drivers short amid the supply chain crisis. This historic trucker shortage again. And in less than a decade, it's projected to get even worse. Billy is 71 years old. And the Billy is 71 years old. My gosh, bro. Average driver is 48 years old. The industry needs younger drivers to enter the business and stay. And like Caleb Fernandez. Unlike Billy, he's a company driver and he's paid by the mile. He also uses the company's truck. While Caleb doesn't have the same expenses as Billy, he has to worry about something else surveillance. The biggest problem solving that I do in my day is working so that I can be legal in the regulations. In 2017, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration introduced electronic logging devices. So I've got six hours left that I can work until tomorrow. These logs are meant to keep the drivers from working too long and to make sure they take breaks. But what it really- Homeboy got a cat on the truck. <laughs> I ain't hating on it. I'm not hating on it. What he does is mess with trucker autonomy. It tracks my location and knows if I've been moving the truck around. So I can't lie and say that I've been uh, driving less hours than I have been. Stop so it lets you know <laughs> on the e-log if you're doing something illegal, it'll warn you. Hey, wait a minute. Drivers start the clock and have 14 hours to work before yeah. they have to take a 10 hour rest. During that shift, they can only drive for 11 hours and take three hours for stops or deliveries. The problem is they might get stuck waiting on a load. Men, no one ever, these shippers, bro, they should be freaking charged for messing with your clock. I believe that, but whatever. Or they might break down, or they might have to take a long nap, but the clock keeps running. A lot of shippers and receivers will be unreliable in terms of their appointment times. And so then that can ruin my hours of service. It can also ruin my next pickup or drop. That can be pretty stressful as well. And because a lot of drivers like Caleb are paid by the mile, they want to keep moving. It forces drivers to drive in dangerous conditions and when they're tired. Facts. Truckers have been keeping logs for decades, but before they were paper logs. And the fact is, those were easier to fake. Yes, they were. And look, we're not advocating for cheating. These safety regulations are really important. No one wants drivers on the road that have been working for too long or who are tired. The problem is these e-logs are really restrictive and drivers can't make their own schedule. The laws as they're written are really hard to follow. They're brutal. And it doesn't help that some people, some place tells you to be there at two, three o'clock in the morning. And then the next place needs you to be there by 10 o'clock. That don't help either. And your DM does not give a crap about your sleep whatsoever. You're just a horse he can whip until you die. That doesn't help either. And then on top of that, the company ain't paying you crap. That doesn't help either. But I digress. And besides, e-logs aren't actually making the roads safer. A 2019 study showed that since the e-logs were introduced, accidents didn't go down. They stayed about the same. But something else went up. Drivers were speeding more to make up for the lost time on the road. Wow. We've put them in this, you know, trade-off between, you know, their paycheck and, and safety, unfortunately. The truth is it has nothing to do with safety. It was, it was productivity. They have an electronic overseer electronic overseer that is that is watching your every freaking move and if you fall out of the lines of their productivity it affects your logs and your money that's what the point of it was i don't think it had nothing to do with safety at all because none nobody does anything for safety everybody does everything for profit and i also believe that they put them there to stop dudes from doing these what they call what we call now a team load Oh, this is tight. This is a team load. It wasn't a team load back in the day. Oh, Solo could have got it and got that profit. Now it's like, oh, it has to be a team load. Well, who has all the teams? The mega carriers, because they're doing all the training. It just, it knocked people out of the water. That's what I think happened, but I digress. Billy thinks that one way to encourage safe driving is to increase pay. Then drivers aren't as worried about racing for the next load and the next paycheck. That will work. We want to be paid all hours worked, all hours paid. We're sitting, loading and unloading for more than 30 minutes at a given facility. We want to be paid for it. Billy and Caleb both love what they do and want to stay in the industry. 
We started this video looking at why trucking used to be a good job and why it isn't anymore. Deregulation made a lot of products cheap, really cheap, but at a serious cost to workers. Like Billy said, nothing moves in this country without truckers, and they should get paid for all the time they're working. There's a bill right now that would change the Fair Labor Standards Act and make truckers... Remember that bill. I want you to be informed. Remember that bill. Eligible for overtime. Second, safety regulations need to give drivers more flexibility. Truckers can track their time and take breaks without such strict oversight. And Billy thinks that ultimately the job won't get any better unless drivers themselves take action. It wasn't like this when we were organized and we're the only ones that can change it. Owner operators and company drivers. Together. Not owner operators bashing the company drivers, not company drivers putting a finger up to the uh, to the owner operators. We do got to stop that. We're fighting with each other when it makes no sense and it does not benefit you too. That's all I'm saying, but I digress. When we organize, then things will change. This was, um, I think this was a dope, dope, dope video. Dope video. I want you to be informed. Okay? That's why I'm, I'm starting to do videos like this. Because too much in these channels, it just becomes that one person's thought. When a video like this can be done, you get to hear multiple people's opinions in one place for you to get a more a nuanced, nuanced thought. Maybe we need to start working together instead of, instead of our drivers arguing with each other. This whole, oh, you know, he's, he's on a robber and he's making all this money. That is not true. And you know, you hear me, may hear people with no face in comments say, oh, I'm at 6,000. It's bullshit. It's not real. That person never can pull up and tell you how they're making that money. That person never tells you their name. It's cockamamie crap. How about we focus? How about we start researching our, 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 our freaking industry? How about we start getting knowledgeable about what's actually going on? Thank you for being here. I hope you sub. I hope you hit the like button. Just smash it, and I'll bring you more content like this. You smash the like button. Let me know if you're even interested in this conversation, if you want to you hear about stuff like this. Comment at the bottom if you agree or disagree. Look through the video. Comment on something I said. Put a timestamp next to it. Comment, 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 comment. Get your voice out there. Don't do drugs. Don't drink alcohol. Keep it between the lines. The greasy side down. Make it home to see your family. This is Trucker Brown. I hope you subscribe. Don't do drugs.